right, guys, welcome to Tuner Talk. So, we've been talking about this for a while. It's just me and you. Yeah. So, if we're going to make enemies, now's the time. <laughs> um, we haven't by now. We haven't already got an no. army of people like plotting our deaths. Um, so, what we came up with was a topic of, of stupid modifications, or we, so can, or we consider stupid modifications. We had a hard time coming up with them. There's so many. There's there's so there are. Many. So if we can you know, narrow it down where we're not sitting here like our normal one hour, <laughs> an hour and a half yeah, long. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, some of this stuff is performance oriented, some of this stuff is modification to body oriented. Um, so, I mean, really, none of it's performance oriented. Yeah, and they think it is. But let's but let's keep not. And, and we're not going to talk about eBay mods, which is like for another it's topic. But it's another yeah, time because yeah. we could. And, and I want to get some eBay parts in here and just like shoot so out we them can you know or like yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just slowly push them off the table. <laughs> as we go. But um, just just do some uh, stuff that eBay is eBay. You can get some great stuff on eBay. Oh yeah. You can buy some quality parts on eBay. Yeah. If it's cheap, it's usually cheap for a reason. I'm, I'm not into eBay. If you know if you know how to read the description no. yeah. and you know a brand name, it is gonna be what you no, want to be. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and so let's let's start out with something that is on eBay, for example, that a lot of people buy on eBay because it's cheap and it's it seems like a good idea. Some some things seem like a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, so like manual boost controllers. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Turbo cars, obviously, any kind of turbo car. So, it's it's a very inexpensive way to turn up the boost on your car. Yes. Um, it's very inexpensive to do and very expensive to fix to if you fit. do it wrong. So, what? Well, I think the big, the biggest problem with manual boost controllers is almost nobody does any of the supporting mods to make them not a miserable failure. Sure. Like fueling and like tuning, or and or, 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 just like, or or under tuning. So the, yeah, the other yeah. problem is we both live in Florida, right? So you have a situation where in Florida it could be eighty degrees during the day and fifty degrees. Yeah. At oh yeah, happens all the time. Yeah. And if you're tuning your car or turning up your at boost noon. at noon yeah. at hundred degrees yeah. on your lunch break, and then you go out that night, colder air is denser air. Yeah. Now you're so over boosted. Yeah. Electronic boost control's biggest advantage is it knows what you're actually yeah. boosting. Yeah. 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 So it, it, it can compensate, so it always keeps you boosting at, yeah. that, at whatever you set it for. Yeah. Um, and man, there's no margin for error with manual man boost control. There, well, you're talking about parts that are essentially, you, and, I've, and I've seen videos on it, doing yourself videos, where guys have gone into Home Depot yeah. and built oh, I'm a like, manual boost control like in the plumbing oh, section. God. They oh, built it in the plumbing section, and the sh it works, okay? It yeah, works. yeah but, until, until it doesn't. But the problem is, you know, you... You run the car, you run the car, you run the car, and then all of a sudden you go out on one night, it's in the winter, you haven't driven your car in a while, and you, like you said, you don't have the supporting mods, or you don't even have a gauge in there that's really telling mm -hmm. you what it is, because factory gauges are kind of whatever. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you were out there, you tuned to run, you know, 12 pounds of boost, and all of a sudden you're at 18 pounds yep. of boost, and now you need an engine. And you're super lean, yeah, you lean out. Yeah. I guess the only thing that's easy is that you can unhook it easily and, and they take it to the other know, 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 know. Know. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a bad idea. I mean Yeah, I mean I, is it a stupid mod? No. Is it It's a dangerous mod. Yeah, because it only works like in pardon the pun in a vacuum, like in a very specific <laughs> set of circumstances sure. that works. And I mean, outside of that it doesn't but work. How many times have you run into Not things right. that can work in theory? Yeah, but okay. yeah. I mean spend the extra the, the key point is go get a brand name Electronic boost controller. Spend the money. It's a little bit hard to put in. Yes, right. it's a. But you know what? As it, hopefully, you're going to get more into the car. You're going to want to do more mods to the yeah, car, yeah. and that electronic component is going to be better. In the yeah. Yeah. Um, here's where we make the enemies. So, stance. Um, oh yeah. You know, you've you've, yeah. you've been around a long time. I, I've judged I've judged car shows for years and years and years and years, and I don't. I think stance is one of those things like anything in a car that. Just go way too far with anything, and, and it's and it's a matter of it's a matter of um, of preference, but the problem is it's also safety. You're running on the yeah. narrowest part of the inside of your tire if you go too far. Yeah. And the car you basically done what a lot of people do in the tuning world is they make a reliable good car on drivable. Yeah. Yeah. Where they're eating through tires or they're they're ripping up the. It doesn't. And, and, and bear in mind, we're not talking about slammed cars. We're not talking about cars that the wheels are tucked and the fitment's gorgeous and you can't fit a credit card between the wheel arch or it's on air or and, and driving a car static that low is art. Getting yeah. out of a parking lot's art. 
and I have nothing but respect for people that do that and make a car look clean like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm talking about cartoon levels of stance where they're, you know. Well, it's, it's interesting that you use that word, right? So there's a lot of parallels between, like, the, like, like camber gang stance, stance guys in the U.S. and, like, Japanese bozo, like, car right. culture. Where, like, the cars are modified to a comical extent on purpose. Right. Like, right. The difference between Japanese bozo cultures, they don't take themselves seriously. They know they're being silly. Right. And here, like, the camera gang guys are like, oh, that's awesome, bro. Like, it's not awesome. It's yeah, stupid. I, I mean, but, so what... There's no function. I don't... What, I, what research has shown recently is that the reason a lot of people are going with a lot of camber and a lot of low, 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 and low and slow is it's very cheap. Yeah, it is. It is the cheapest I way mean, you and I have spent more money on an ECU. Oh, yeah. And these guys have spent... Lowering their cars in total, yeah, as the little Japanese dog walks by. Um, but it's it's one of those things where I mean, we're not going to get to wheels and all that stuff. But I mean, whatever wheels you like, you like the wheels. But it's going so low, buying cheap coilovers, buying cheap you know things to make the car low, and then you know, the, usually if it's cheap and you're doing it because you don't have a lot of money to invest in your car, and there's nothing wrong with that. Love your car, but yeah. You probably got to drive this thing to work. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's a death trap. Well, and that's the thing is, is it really does come down to money, doesn't it? Because the guys like you and me have <coughs> several cars, right? Right. So we'll have one race only car. We'll have one, you know, daily driver only car. One tow rig. One whatever. We have however specific, long that lasts. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm gonna, this is just going to be my daily. I'm not going to do anything to it. I just bought it. Yeah, I always do. Yeah, I did the same thing. Yeah. But my point is anyway, it, we can afford to have one of those break. We can still get to work. Right, because, you know what I mean. But you know, that's that's when I talk to a lot of young guys getting into cars and getting into tuning and stuff. And the first thing I tell them is, if you're going to build a, a, a car, yeah. get another car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, go buy some fifteen hundred dollar beater that's going to get you back and forth to work. So the day that you blow up your car, or the day that something breaks, or the day that you have to wait for a shop to fix something, you can still get to work and Correct. earn more money to do the next mod. To do the next mod. That's that's actually the biggest lesson that I learned out of like my teenage years in car culture is to never make your daily a project. Never. But it's impossible. Yeah. I mean, come on. Get another car. Yeah. And then then you wind up with five cars. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm <laughs> or or, or six. Next month, actually. Or, or six. Yeah. So, um, so. But actually, it's that that's a good segue to the cut springs. Yeah, I mean. Talking about cheap stance. Cheap mods. Like, okay, so everybody makes jokes of it. And, but the thing is, a lot of times you see cars that are lowered and you can't tell if they're cut springs. No, or, yeah, no. Or heated springs. Down the edge, but there's all, it all these YouTube the videos on how, like to, this. how to screw up your car in 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but there's reasons that thing, there's reasons that there's companies out there, and without name dropping, everybody knows who the big guys are. Right. But it, even the smaller companies that we've, we've dealt with, it's, it's quality. You can tell quality when you look yeah, at absolutely. it. Absolutely. If it looks like it's going to break, in the, well, you're installing it. Yeah. Don't install it. Yeah, don't. I mean, and, and to get where you need to go the cheap way doesn't work. Save up the money and do it, do it right. right. Yeah. But the, not on your only. But car. the thing is, you're also dealing with the youth market. Yeah. And the youth market is impatient. It's true. It's true. We, we it's you get true. old. You know, you get older. You get a little bit more more patient with right. the project. You want right. to do it right. 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 You right. don't want to do it right now. That's right. And I think I feel like that's a lesson you learn. Like, I'm on the other side of thirty now. And I feel like that's definitely a learn, like a lesson that you learn. That yeah. You go like, you know what? I really want this car, this part, or this whatever, but I don't need it right now because it's going to cause this or that problem or whatever. You get to a point, I think, where you're just like, at a certain age, if you stay in the cars, it's not just a fad for you, where you're like, I don't need that. You get, but, I'm going to do it right. But also, you now you know, with YouTube and all this other stuff, there's a lot of people out there that will show you. Uh, like I always like to watch Upsis Garage or goes like that. Or they'll show you how to do it. In nauseating levels of detail, so that the average person can get where they need to go without cheaping, going to cheap way. Yes. Not everybody has the money to send a car to a big name tuner. No, and, and, and if you look at some of the big name tuners, they don't even do it anymore because there's no money in it for them. Because the market well, has become so small, the uber rich guy that wants to spend 20 grand putting a turbo in their car. Well, and actually, in a way, that's good because it's keeping buy it yourself, build it yourself alive. Because, like, I, 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 I don't know if it's the same for you, but I have a huge issue with guys who have awesome cars who didn't spend a wrench on them. Like, they just bought a car, sent um, it to a tuner, told them what parts they wanted, and got it. I hate that. <laughs> having been the guy on the other end. But yeah. It's like, there's, there's, uh, to do the basic stuff, but, you know, if you want to tune your McLaren, 
What, different, even, that's right. okay. Or even, it's, or, you were, or even, even this, like. But the guys we're talking about don't have them. Like, if you if you Google, I want my super to be fast. Titan's gonna pop up. Yeah. If you if you look at you know I have an S chassis and I want to go fast, you're gonna be talking to a Jupiter. You're yeah. Talking to so there's guys out there for a reason, um, but you know, like I said, you can get where you need to go. Take the extra couple of weeks of paychecks. Yeah. Take you know. So you didn't get it done this summer. Okay, life's not over. Well, I mean, I don't want to say that I don't think that no shops should exist to provide a solution to do that. I'm just saying I don't no, want guys still, who but it's the money. don't turn one I'm, wrench on their car. But, yeah, but I'm, what I'm saying is, like, turn the wrench. Yeah. Watch a YouTube video on how to install it coilovers. Out. Yeah. Do it safely. Use jack stands. Get a good jack. Harbor freight, whatever it is, but but get the tools. Yeah. And then do it because then you not only have the pride of saying, hey, look, I did it right, but I did it I right. Did. And then I put the coilovers in. I didn't sit under there with a blowtorch and three fat friends sitting on the car. <laughs> you know, so, so, so that's the stance. Um, you know, we live in Florida. I don't care where you live. Um, cold air intakes for a lot of cars with like <laughs> a monument. I don't care if the thing's such turboed, a bad idea. turboed or or uh, or you know or not. Um, the idea of in some cold air intake systems work. Because you don't want the, you know you don't want the air filter in the hot engine bay. No, 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 no. And it, and it, well, snorkel systems for like trail trucks they work because right. they're out and right. they're not going to get rain in on. But them. you and know what happens is you get these, get, cars, you get these companies that make it's basically a piece of pipe. Yeah. And it, a couple clamps and you slap it on your car and your the air filter is now right in front of your tire mm -hmm. or in your wheel well mm -hmm. or in the bumper and. When it rains, that filter gets saturated with water. Suck water. I don't care how clean it, how clean it is, or whatever. And you know, it's it's going to get water in it, and the tire is going to splash water up on it, and it's going to get saturated. And then in Florida, it ain't. You know, right? We, we were here for the hurricane. It was like it was like driving around in the Everglades. Oh, it was awful. It was, and the funny thing is, when when cold air intakes first started getting popular, I was pretty young. But when they first started getting popular. Literally, the first thing I said is, "Well, what do you do in rains?" That's, I mean, that's just what came to mind. And, what do you do in rains? But, but the thing is, unlike a lot of BS stuff, they work. They do make more power when it's dry. When it's dry, then they, they make more they damage make, when it's wet. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And, and the thing is, but there is a solution to the problem, which is getting an air valve or, or one of those. Um, oh yeah. You know, but you're still getting that water sucked into your. Engine. Yeah. I mean, those valves will save you from. Chug in five gallons, and it, it takes yeah. it takes literally like only a few hundred cc's of water well, not to do it. your motor. Yeah. And yeah. I've seen the inside of hydraulic engines too. that when your connecting rods are twisted like a pretzel. Yeah. He's going to go, eh, and he's going to make adjustments. Right, right, right. right. But for the average person, you know, just bolt it on. They're going to ignore it. Yeah. They're going to uh, gonna what? They're going to set it and forget it. It's what they can yeah. do. So cold air intakes, you can use them for the most part. Modern cars, like if you're getting into newer cars, the tunes are not bad. Like I remember when the 350Z came out, there was uh, all these parts came out. Like, And a lot of companies were prototyping like still in and Jim oh, Wolf yeah. and Nismo. And, yeah, yeah. Well, Nismo, obviously, Nissan. But, yeah, Nissan. Yeah. Um, but what's funny is all the companies, a lot of these companies came out, oh, we got exhaust. Oh, we got intake. Tons and they of exhaust. bolted them on, yeah. and you lost power. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. And only the guys that were really in the R&D phases early on were making it. But the thing is, you go and bolt a, a full exhaust system on 350Z, like a, like a cat-back system. Yeah. And you go and bolt an intake on 350Z, and you get, like, 25 horsepower. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you get... Now, and they have cars on the other side of the spectrum, like E30s, which you know I have. But right, also aftermarket exhausts aren't big for them because they are all they float so well right. from the factory that. And it's like it's almost like car audio. When you get into car audio, there's a reason there's almost no car audio shops anymore. The OEMs because are because good better. stuff works. Yeah, the yeah. factory stuff works. Yeah. Um, well, I think that's especially going to be true when like every manufacturer offers, you know, something that has like Android audio or like uh, auto and what's it called Android Auto and like, all the Apple, yeah, as standard. Because then people are just going to be like, well, 
Yeah, but you still might want a little bit more boom or some better speakers or whatever. You can add some stuff to whatever the head units are. When I bought my Lexus, it does not have the top of the line audio system. Okay, it has the the, the low end stock one. It low end in that car. It's yeah, it's but, still uh, an RCA. And I, so. you know, I was literally my friend has a car audio shop. I said like, we're gonna put some tens in this thing as soon as I get it. And I got the car and I'm driving it. And I'm like, this thing sounds amazing. Putting tens in here is just gonna take up trunk space. Yeah. You know, so it works better. But so. Um, what's next? Um, <laughs> Rebadging. Uh oh, um, this it, is so bad. This is such a bad time. Okay, I've worked. I, I am a big fan of JDM cars. I did it for 15 years yep. plus. Still love them. Still own them. Love the cars. Yeah. Don't put GTR badges on everything. No. And I, and my and my my crowd is wor I think worse about this. Maybe not than GTRs and like R spec and B spec and all right, that right, stuff. Right. Probably not in that way. But like I can't. I can't count how many times I've seen a completely not not even an M Sport package car with M badges on it, or like some people will go so far as to remove all the badges and then add just an M badge. You're like, dude, when you do that, you, well, you why know, are you doing maybe, that? Maybe they're doing it because they think M means more on than they are on. That's oh, they're, they're letting us know. They're letting us know. That point. could be. That could be. Uh, you know, with the Nissan stuff, is I've gone. We go to so many shows, and I have. I have literally had to tell owners of R34s that their car was a V spec. They didn't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Because the car had been, the badges had been taken off the car, had been customized in some way. But you knew what to look for. Because in Japan, they take the blasts off. Yeah. They're not badge they happy. They de badge. They de badge cars. Yeah. And I think, you know, like even my NSX, you can't, it says accurate nowhere. I'm actually a big fan of de badging. I yeah. think it's a it much cleaner the car. Look. Yeah. It cleans the yeah. car. It's like, you know, it's like these guys that are driving around with the license plate frame of the dealership they bought the car from seven years ago. You bought the car from them, you paid them their money, you don't need Why to advertise. Why are you advertising? Right, yeah, right. Right. Getting, they, they don't advertise uh, anymore. Um, no, no, that and AMG. AMG, oh God. There's, uh, it, I think it, it's more the case in BMW than Mercedes just because the typical Mercedes-Benz owner tends to be older. And they're usually well, I think they're more. They lean more to the luxury. You lean more to, you lead more to sport. sport, yeah. But but the, but the, you know the typical Benz owner is trying, is trying to change a more mature career. person. Sure. They they're not concerned with that sort of thing. But yeah. Ooh. Or explain this one to me because I'm sure you've seen. I'm sure everyone who's in the car has seen it. The guy with the red V6 Mustang GTR that was trying to explain. Okay. So, so yeah, I yeah. have it, it, like That's that. car shows. I have seen I have seen GTR badges on Mustangs. I have seen GTR badges on Grand Ams. I have seen GTR Mustangs on Firebirds. Oh God! I, it, it's like so. One of one of my clients had bought a GTT from us, mm -hmm. R34, and the day he got it, uh, our video guy Noah's friend actually, yeah, he put a GTR badge on it, and three days later he totaled the car, right? Totaled the car and. When I saw the car, it's I had, a I had story. to go over. Yeah, he totaled the car. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good ending to it. He totaled the car, and I walked over and go, that's why you totaled the car. <laughs> the, the JDM gods are punishing you yeah. for putting a GTR yeah. badge on it. And I literally walked over, and I pulled the badge off the car. And, and the I said, we're, we're not sending it to the junkyard. Like, no, no. Yeah, and then he went out, and he, actually, his insurance company paid him. And he came back, and like six days later, bought another car in white, same exact model and everything. So... He, and, he, and he's not put a scratch. Yeah, yeah, he learned his, he learned his yeah, lesson. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't really his fault to begin with. But the, you know, it's. I have seen, and, and some of my friends, if they watch the video, they're going to know who I'm talking about. I, 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 turn into a child when I get around certain cars too. And I was at a car show a while back in West Palm Beach, and I saw this R34 GTR, and I was like, oh, it's gorgeous. I walked around the back of the car. The first thing you want to do is look at, and it says, it says, R34. V spec M or, or no sorry uh, M spec NER and I looked in the car and I'm like wow leather interior M specs had leather interior I know what an M spec looks like I asked the guy to pop the hood he popped the hood it had the louvers and everything so it's all the M spec stuff and I'm looking at the car and I just looked at the VIN on the car and I memorized it and when I got it home that night I, I threw it up on my on the Japanese decoder and it's an M spec, but it's not a NER. Oh, and it's so, like so guys why would you been, so guys I guys do this at every level. There's a guy that I'm really good friends with in California, and I I he brought his R34 GTR to SEMA. We had sold him the car. It was a base model GTR in Bayside Blue, 
I'm sorry, you got a Bayside Blue R34. The, what model it is doesn't matter at that point. You've won. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he shows up, and I'm looking at it, and it says V-Spec Neuro on the back of it, and I'm like, How much did that badge cost you? I'll pay you for the badge right now if you take it off. Take it off. <laughs> you know. And, but it's like that stuff. Um, you get Type R is another one. Oh, you type R badges on everything. Yeah. If you have a Honda or you have an Acura <laughs> yeah. that's that's a you know a U.S. <laughs> Type R, because they made the Type sure. R. Sure, sure. Just leave it alone, the Acura badge. I mean, it is it is what it, or take the badge wait, off. Wait, you mean to tell me they didn't make four-door automatic Civic Type R's? Because I've seen some of those around here. And, it, and it's, the thing is, the badging stuff is <laughs> just one of the things that's like cancer that's spread across it's every bad. Type R. European cars, you know, uh, now, now you got Volkswagen Golfs with Type R badges well, on because they make an R. And the thing is, is it doesn't benefit anyone. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it really makes the car heavier. <laughs> and it's, and, yeah, it's very technical. Whatever but, like, the next, guy, the next guy or girl that buys the car isn't going to be like, oh, oh, it's a Type R. No, it, it, no not, and, the, and then you're going to have what guys. What do you get out of but this? But then you have guys like us that go up to the car show yeah. and know the difference and totally call you yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, why don't you just take this back off? It's, yeah, it's inviting hum humiliation. I've judged, I've judged car shows and guys are trying to tell me things. And I'm just like, you're so I'm a professional. I'm, yeah. I'm here judging your car for a reason. This is what amazing. I do. Yeah, 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 this is what I do. And they're just like, uh, 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 you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but badging is like, badging doesn't make your car any faster. No. It doesn't it, make your car any faster. And all it's going to do is make you maybe seem cool to a bunch of people who don't, who don't know, know any better. Which, and you don't want to impress them anyway. Artists, well, yeah, 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 yeah. people you want to impress. You want to impress people with how clean your build is, yeah. number one. Don't go to a car show. Important tip with car shows. Don't go to a car show with dirty interiors. Oh, man. Don't go to car shows with take the time because cleanliness scores higher than anything. I don't care if you have a blower through the top of your car. Yeah. If your car is, looks like you went mudding with it and you didn't even take the time you to drove it, from there we to don't care. Yeah, yeah. We're done. Um, in badging, technically, stickers are bad. Yeah. Re you stick your car. If you have a team or you have a crew and you want to badge your car and sticker your sorry, sticker your car up with your crew sticker team livery team livery yeah <laughs> but it's fine sticker your car put your crew yeah, on it yeah. put your name on the door yeah, yeah, you yeah. know like your Top Gun or something yeah you yeah I get yeah. it you want to do that stuff it's fine but putting stickers in the back of your car for mods you don't have yeah or all these guys that, that have their uh, their Instagram name. But the car is stock, or mostly stock. Like, why am I gonna follow you to see what a normal car looks like? Like, no. And, what's the purpose of that? And it's like, or you have a car that's either uh, bone stock, yeah. bone stock, yeah, or a, I'm sorry, guys, a shit box. Yeah, you know? yeah. And you've got Team Kia. Yeah, or, yeah, or, yeah. Or, or team, yeah. Team what? They don't want you on their team. Because <laughs> trust me, I'm get I'm, somebody on that team has a good car. When 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 we had so fifteen years plus of black ops, people would call me up and say, "Sell me a banner, sell me a window sticker," and I'd be like, "Oh, like yeah." I'd be like, "For what?" Yeah, yeah. Because they're like, "Oh, I want to put it on my Acura." I want to no, no. Well, why not? I'm like, "Do you want me to advertise for you?" No. Yeah. No. I, no. I, you know, if I'm offering you a sticker, it's one of the cars we sold you, or it's a car that you that I've seen at a show, and I'm offering you an opportunity to go shows with us. You're representing the brand. It's a brand. Right, right, right. Any crew, any group is a brand. You're only as good as the shittiest car in your Yeah, group. you don't want you don't want a, a black ops or whatever right. the case may be banner on some basic bitch car. Or or <laughs> like, or what's or what's the new thing now is everybody is you know stance. They'll put uh, a stance sticker on a car that's lowered. You know, we could see the car. Long before yeah. we could see the sticker, I knew what it we was. We knew what it was. Yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah. not like oh, yeah. it's why you, it's not broken. It no. stands. You put a sticker in the back oh, of your head that says "car." Yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or manual, or a sticker on the wind on the driver's window that says "idiot." Or yeah, something. yeah, yeah. But, but that's helpful. But now, at least. now that's the negative. I mean, you got a lot of this stuff where people just go out and and I, we have friends that own companies that all they sell is stickers and tons of stickers I, and so several, several. and some of the stuff is awesome. Like, yeah, I did some funny stuff. Yeah, some good quality printed stickers. But it's it's just if you make somebody laugh or you make somebody or you're representing someone that your car is clean and you're representing someone, it's pride. It's this you know, uh, friends of mine run Simply Clean. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I and for the longest time, I, actually I'm looking at the car right now and I realized when I cleared my wing I didn't put a sticker back on. But at the back of the wing, it said Simply Clean. I was like, "What's well, Prismatic stickers?" 
And I had that wing with that back of that car was in so many pictures. But it's like a clean car, and, and, and then you're catching their company. No, yeah. But simply clean, I mean, if you've never been to the event or you're not from Florida or whatever, they pick your car. If your car doesn't pass, you don't get in. Yeah. You don't get a trophy. You know what your trophy is? You got in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we, we, we joke that there's this lot where everyone parks, and then everyone walks in, and then the show cars are in a different lot, right? Yeah. And we call it the loser lot. Yeah. Because that's where the cars didn't get, that didn't get the show. Well, because they want a certain quality. Sure. But that's like, you know, like we fields. talked about in that one episode where, you know, like doing a car right, not not doing the kind of slap it together, tape your electrical connections together. Mm -hmm. But stickers, I mean, they have pros and cons. I mean, you want to advertise, hey, I put this mod on, have the mod. I think the sticker. Like I'm, the, I'm the victim. I'm the, you know, you know I like. My, my Lexus is sticker up, but, but every sticker on that car, I have on the car. Yeah, well, and that's what I was going to go with. And we do a lot of shows, too, so it's, it's, it represents companies that have helped us. Right? I think I think the, the issue, right, with the people who just festoon their cars with stickers is they want so badly to be associated with the guys who really build cars, who have stickers and parts that are actually in it, who do clean right. it. They want to be associated with those people so badly that they're like... Grasping at straws. Well, it's the same thing stickers. like you know, YouTube. Yeah. A lot of YouTubers are wearing the YouTubers' T-shirts and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you like the guy and you represent. That's great. But you know, you're keeping them on the air too. I mean, yeah. You're buying yeah. that T-shirt or whatever. But the thing is, a lot of times with stickers, you're representing like we'll put stickers on cars that we built for show because of that company hooked us up with the wheels. Yeah, supported you in know? some way. And, 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 and I, you know, I can tell you, one of the most common questions I get asked is how do I get parts from manufacturers? Mm -hmm. And the problem is, you, the way to get there is already be there. Like, you yeah, gotta have yeah, to spend yeah. the money to, for them to give you something. Yeah, it's true. And, and, and true. don't expect you know, a wheel company to give you wheels. Wheels and tires are the hardest things in the world to get. Yeah. Because, first of all, they're giving you the wheels and tires, and then you're driving off, you can sell them the next week, yeah. or you can total that car. They want you to give them a, I'm gonna be at 10 shows this year, I'm gonna do this. Yeah. And, and I've got tons of stuff, and I've got hookups, yes, but, I paid for every part. Right. I may not have paid full price for every part, but I paid for every part. Well, but it wasn't a handout. Yeah. It wasn't a handout. Yeah. But don't expect it, because you know you're you know you're not going to get something for free from a company that already has a reputation. Right. 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 You know, right. And, and, and they're not desperate for attention. Right. They're just gonna right. do whatever to help. Yeah. Them. And it's yeah. like you know like yeah. So I mean you're but you know, do stickers anything on your car do it tastefully. Because, yeah, I agree. You know, I mean, you can do it, and, and don't put stickers that obstruct your view or in any way make it dangerous to drive your car. I've seen some stuff where it's all the way down the windshield. Like, how do you see? Yeah. Like, yeah. why hasn't the cop pulled you over the minute you pulled out of the the show? Because we were in Florida. <laughs> we were in Florida. Um, so what else? So we got uh, covered all that stuff. Okay, so here we are. <laughs> Spoilers on front wheel drive. Oh. So, all right, you know there's going to be guys that say, like, oh, in time attack, it works, and, you know, whatever. Those cars Show are going... Show me your time attack like Yes, <laughs> like, those cars are going so much faster than those cars. And they're, like, they're built, they have, you know, huge, huge wings, and they're, they have two you're, suspensions, you're, they have, like, you know, you they're see, race see, cars. You see, and Yours is not. When you look at cars that were built to be factory race cars, like the Civic Type R, which will have right. like a little yeah. tasteful lip. Yeah. It's designed. You look at some of the new cars, like, all right, let's, like the Senna, or yeah. the, the, the P1, or, or cars like that, that have spoilers, big wings, okay? And when they go fast, the wing actually deactivates. It yeah. comes down, yeah, lets yeah, yeah. it off, because at that point, you're just slowing your car down. That's right. I mean, a good spoiler is aerodynamically tested for the car. Yeah. You know, there's there's ten wings out there for an NSX. Three or four of them are really doing anything. The ones that do give you 150 pounds of downforce at yeah. 90 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour. So they work. Well, but, but you're lifting about, the front end of your car off the ground when it's front wheel drive. Think about what you just said. You get X amount of degrees of downforce at Y speed. speed. Right. And you you have these these guys, and I mean, I hate to, I don't want to pick on them, but you have these guys in Civics. They have this ridiculous oh, duck bill that's at like yeah. 45 degrees or, or worse. Right. And they all they do is use it to get back and forth to work or whatever else. And it's like and you're never going to get to the speed no. at which that wing works. No. Oh, and, and so it actually a lot of these topics that we discussed fall into this sort of category where people are just faking the funk. Like they want to yeah. appear to well, be a race car so that's, badly. That's almost like the livery thing. I mean, I love livery cars. I yeah. think if they're done right. I mean, every time I see like a GT40 or, or 
when we put GTs in, it's like golfed. Yeah. Or we see that's, some Yeah, that's really cool. No, that's yeah. cool. Uh, but it's but it's an homage to an actual race car. Yeah. And the car is if it's on like a Ford GT or whatever. I mean that's so close to being an actual race sure. car. Sure. But you see, no, I've seen, box I've box seen stuff with Advan stuff. It looks, yeah. it looks like a race car. Uh, my friend actually has a, a little Suzuki. I forget what it is, but little micro car, key car. Frank's going to be on here at some point. But he's he's the he owns high rev and he's the king of like little cars. He, <laughs> he's he's got you know, cap, the cappuccinos and the figaros. He, he's, oh, he's, wow. he's he's the guru of that stuff. And and little he has this little well, yeah he, well, he has two big dog Tommy cars. But he he has this little Suzuki. I can never remember what it is. He's going to laugh at me because I couldn't remember. But it's real advent and it was a race car. It's got these little wheels on it. And like I'm like I just I just want to drive it. It's, it's, it's going to be a hard to slow car. But it's, it's probably like, done well. But it's, yeah, it is. And it's yeah. like three-cylinder tur- supercharged or whatever it is. But it's done well. It's slippery yeah. stuff. But the thing is, like, the wings are functional. Like, you see these guys with Civics, and they, you, know, you see a lot of race stuff with Civics, like, like tuned cars, and mm-hmm. they drill the holes in the bumper. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. the, the speed holes. Okay? Mm-hmm. You get more out of the speed holes than that wing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. that wing is defeating whatever you yeah. did with your speed holes that you drilled in, you know. Well, and that's the thing that bothers me too. Is like on the front, the holes are for airflow to an inner Sure. Or when you have a non-turbo car, you're just doing it to fake the funk. Yeah. It kind of gets back to what I was saying. So the other, so the other, one of the other things is, um, and I, I don't know if I, I didn't write this, but we'll, we'll, when you have NA cars, okay, with pretty much a straight pipe. Oh god. And what what people don't realize, you talk to any tuner, you talk to anybody who knows what they're doing. NA cars need a little bit of back pressure mm-hmm. to, to give you some torque. That's, that is correct. Especially on the smaller engines mm-hmm. that don't have, you know, they have that much torque to sub with. Mountain Dew displacement, you know, <laughs> like under two liters. They, they need a little bit of back pressure. Um, and that's why a lot of exhausts will have like double circuits where they'll have, yeah. they'll to a certain level of resistance and then let it go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, turbo cars, hey, put sewer pipe under there. It doesn't make a difference. Yeah, it, no. it's, it's, you don't even need it. The turbo it's is your. It's a back pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, you hear, and I'm like, oh, slow. You know, they, they go by and you're just laughing. Why, since we're on the topic of three piped NA cars, why do, and I'm just going to say all, and you can refute it if you want to, but why do all modern V6s sound like a trash fire straight pipe? The Camaro, the Mustang, especially the Nissan VQs. Oh, my God. So here's, I mean, I know the actual answer, but well, I'm just well, saying. You know, I've said this, you know, my, my friend who has, he's basically like, we go at it, but yeah. you're a, he's a domestic guy. Okay. And, but he owned a Skyline, just saying. So he had he dipped his foot in the good blood. I had a bunch of DSMs. So, turn with DSMs. But, you know, he says my Lexus is a well, Lexus Mustang because it's five liter. And I'm like, okay, but it's also for cam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah okay. But he brings up an interesting point, which I've said before. Displacement has a lot to do with the way the car sounds. Because mm-hmm. it's air. You're mm-hmm. moving, an engine is essentially an and air pump. pump. Yeah. Air comes in, air goes out. So if it's five liters, it's probably, if you put this exact same exhaust on a Mustang, on a Lexus, on, on a Camaro, on whatever, or V6s, they're all going to sound the same because you're moving so much air. Yeah. You're just... It's displacement. Yeah, that, yeah. So that and like cam load separation are usually the answers. But. And, you know, but but the ear is one of those things that like we talked about exotics a while back. Like oh, the I v- love V tens. V tens oh. are symphonies. The Courage the, the, the LFA, the Gallardo. Even the even the Viper sounds good at revs. Yeah, yeah rev, but like it's a different rev. kind of V ten. But it is. It's but, a lot bigger. But you know, like. It, I like the sound of a five liter Mustang. That whole because five liter just sound good. But you get Mustangs like, old, like, yeah. Those V8s always feel. Ferraris are Ferraris. They sound like Ferraris. They sound like uh, cats. But wow. you look into a lot of these domestic cars that are there, you know, or what I like to call the the rental car cars, like the V6 Mustangs that V6, no one else V6 buys. V6 Camaros, like yeah. Camaros, they're the rental. You go to rental car and you see these, the rental you know, fleet cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they sound like that because the displacement's always so big, uh, and they can only make it. The thing is, I have heard. The average R35 exhaust sounds like garbage. Yeah. It just, it doesn't, it sounds like it shouldn't. But you can spend the money. If you really spend the money, they make some amazing sounding exhausts. Yeah, for sure, sure, yeah. Um, but it, it takes a lot of work. You get into a lot, you know. But, and straight piping it ain't it. 
Straight pipe being in. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's just going to make it really loud. It's, they're obnoxious. Um, all right, look, so this is one of my pet peeves. Okay. Fake calipers. Uh, when you go to a show and you see this car that obviously just went on eBay or wherever or Alibaba. Yeah. And Alibaba. Got yeah. This bracket that holds a fake piece of metal that's painted some bright yellow, red, green, blue thing. <sighs> And that hangs over your stock caliper. Some of them aren't even metal; they're just plastic. They're plastic. What a yeah. wonderful idea that is! And, 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 you, you, and your Brembo's melting, sir. Right, your Brembo's. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's probably spelled wrong too. <laughs> yeah. um, your Brembo. Your Brembo's. Brembo's. <laughs> so they put them on there, and they just sit. And like, I guess it kind of passes the twenty-foot test. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. But what's funny is, have you ever seen one going down the road? With like a five-spoke wheel, like a big wheel that's I open, I don't think and they so. go like this. Oh yeah, and they just shake. And I'm like, like that's sir. gonna go flying and kill somebody. Um, no, it's okay. It's a it's a two ounce piece of but, plastic. And, and, and what's funny is people people drop on all these import guys, rice or rice or. I have seen some domestic. I've seen some Uncle Ben's converted brand rice. Yeah, yeah. Like like you've never. Nobody seen. look. There's rice. Corvette people are. Oh, I know. Without a doubt, I know. if there is a ricer division of like the US, oh, it's a domestic market. Yeah, mar- yeah. It ain't the Mustang guys for the most. No, market. no. Corvette guys will go to Eckler's or wherever, <laughs> yeah. and they and go. You want to laugh? Look at an Eckler's catalog. Uh, That's all I'm gonna say. I used to work for those guys. Go in there and look at the catalog. No. They will literally just like chrome everything, and there's chrome like, or you know, fake Z06 vents, uh, um, spoilers, the goofy spoilers. All this little stuff. They make. They have some great stuff that helps you keep your Corvette nice and keep it for a longer time. Yeah. yeah. And, they, and they. I mean, if you have like a '70 Corvette. Yeah. And you need a door panel, you can pick up the phone and they'll be like, "Yep, I got 27 of them. What color do you want?" Well, you know? like I'll give you. Sometimes that isn't a bad thing. Yeah. And what I mean is, like, one of the projects I wanted to do is I wanted to buy a, a bone stock C6, and basically put every body panel on this from a Z06 or a ZR1 that was better. So like the carbon fiber sure. wider fenders, quarters, carbon fiber right. from the ZR1. Updated. But that's on that's objectively better parts. I don't want to put yeah. the badges on there. I'm not going to do that yeah, at all. No. But I want them because they're carbon fiber and they're wider and they're better. But the reason I brought I, I but I'm the, not going to the reason I victimize the Corvette people is because those fake calipers. I've seen them on more Corvettes than any other car. So bad. Um, and then but there's stuff that so in closing, basically there's there's one or two things that your mod shouldn't make your car dangerous. Okay. Yeah, um, no, well, yeah. You know, because because if you want to go out and kill yourself with your car, just don't kill me. Don't, yeah, don't, don't, don't come flying across the highway side and kill me. Well, look, that's kind of a slippery slope, isn't it? Because like you have like a lot of the a lot of the uh, police that have written laws against uh, suspension, lowering suspension, raising, and so on. It's they're trying to make the argument that it makes the car less safe. Even though there's no science to support that. True. So, do some mods make your car more unsafe? Absolutely. But, like, there has to be a standard. And I think that... Yeah, but, I mean, like, so, you and I talked a couple of nights ago about how every time we drive, people have their headlights on. Yeah. Because we live, we live in Orlando. There's a lot of tourists here. They're, they're coming from wherever. They're jumping into a rental car. And they don't realize that just because the dash is lit up, your headlights are on. Yeah, yeah. And they're running with their, their daytime running lights on. And they have no Man, taillights. At least they suck. And, and you know, uh, we, were, we were driving around the night or two ago. There was a motorcycle with no lights on. And I, it was like a road missile at that point. How do you not notice that? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think he was doing it intentionally. But uh, okay. the, the, the point is, there's mods like, okay, too, too much camber. When you're running on that much tire and it's raining, you're going to die. The Oni camber. The Oni camber. Yeah. Um, the car being low is, is an arguable thing, but um, the, but that's the thing. If it's a if it's a dedicated show car, do whatever you want. There's you know if you're, if you're go, daily, yes. what are you but, doing? But it's like you know cops will pull. I've watched cops pull people over more for tint. Yeah. In Florida, tint is keeping your tear from melting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. so tint, and then the other thing is, you know, I I go to so many shows and I see so many people with no windshield wipers on their car. They've taken the windshield wiper off the car because just for the show or just like permanent. I don't, I don't know. Uh, not no, because it's him going down the road. But it's like they take them off because make they'll, they'll remove the entire windshield wiper assembly. Everything. They'll take all the wipers out. Um, race car belt. 
Yeah, apparently. <laughs> because it's like, you know, stage one weight reduction. Because my wiper blades off, they weight seven ounces. <laughs> but they'll take it off and they'll remove the whole wiper setup. Um, we're actually working on a car. We're going to do a video of it uh, in a little while. But it's, uh, it's one of Scion's factory show cars. They had it for years. It's an 05 TC wide body. It's only got like 3,000 original miles on it. Huh. We're going to be getting it in here and we're going to be, for among other things, putting some windshield wipers back in it. Because they thought that was a great idea. Uh, um, there's a few things. Scion did, or the previous owner? Uh, the, the shop that built the car for Scion. Oh. But, but it was a dedicated show car. Came off a trailer, went in. I get story. it. I get it. It's got, it's got a full cage. It's, there's a lot of things that are not conducive to driving it all the time. Well, G Germ Germany, German race cars have done that too. The E30 did that. But the difference is they made it one wiper. So they cut the linkage in half and had the center yeah, wiper I mean, sweep further. So yeah. you still get the weight reduction. But, but I've seen that too. Where you the can still see take, out the windshield. They'll, they'll put one wiper in the middle, and it's pointing straight up. And and the, what I don't, you know, you can't get the same range of motion no, without modifying the linkage. Yeah, no, they, and I, there's I've a read, modified linkage. And I've read some stuff yeah. where guys have actually, oh, you take the arm off this one and put it on this one, or get it off of CRV, and, and it works. But And that's fine, but... You should be able to see out of the car. Yeah, yeah. You get guys tinning. Oh, oh, well, let, this is this is more doing something that's a cool mod too much, which is like you know, um, you know, you, where you're tinning your headlights to the point where your headlights don't work. Yeah. Or yeah, you're yeah. or you're got these bright Black yellow headlights. European Japanese style headlights. I like the yeah, I like the, They look great, but they can't see with the damn headlights. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and the, the things that have advanced a lot over the years are you know. Car suspensions are better, brakes are better, the reliability is better. But you get in some cars with some like like my Lexus, the fucking headlights are blinded. You know, yeah. Three For headlights, yeah, yeah, three yeah. HID, you know, LEDs, and then you put those things on high and forget it. The guy's going for light lacing the next day. <laughs> so I mean, but ah, uh, but that's just an example of you know um, doing something that's you just gone too far. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, removing the wipers, and then, you know, so the other thing is, we covered cut springs, and Cover cut springs. that did that, um, so something you brought up, like fake gauges. Oh, God, yeah, now, yeah. Now, now, I get it, your car may not go 150 miles an hour, and you want a spoiler on it, so, fine, great. The but, question is, how, like, how far, and I don't want to ask this question, because I'm, I'm going to find the definition of <laughs> Someone, tell us someone's going to tell me what it is. But how far are people really willing to go to fake funk? Like, when, specifically when I was talking about, when I was talking about the it's gauges. It's way cheaper to put gauges in your car than to put the engine that the gauges need. Well, <laughs> but just the thing is, is, right, they're not just putting, like, a gauge pot in, like, the face of a gauge and then sort of look. They're buying the gauges. They're just not routing them to anything, or maybe there's not a turbo for the No, no, the argument's going to be, I bought the gauges because I'm going to do the mod later. Okay, okay, that's great. That's great. That's gonna be the, that's like buying parts for a car you don't own yet. Like, <laughs> well, <laughs> why? It, it, I'm gonna buy it. It, it goes, it goes back to you know putting the stickers on the car that you don't have the part. You know, um, I just, I'm just I what I'm what I'm getting out of this all these topics in this conversation it, it, it's made me kind of realize that people are willing to go really far to pretend to do or be something. That they're not. The, and it's like, the thing is, the internet is a great tool to find out the answers to things, but unfortunately, some of the answers are people's perception of the answers. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, um, I I have seen some amazing lowered cars, some amazing VIP or or even cars that you know you and I would go, why do you lower that? Like Subarus, mm -hmm. which are conducive of being traction monsters and. We're lowering a skyline. I mean, there's a guy in California has an R34 GTR that's on bags. It's it's why did you do that? We you know the elitist weird. Well, the right. function of reform yeah. guys. Right. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Just shake your head in this red. Well, that's for the, for that reason I hate donks because like the entire idea of a donk is function you, has nothing to do with anything. Have you ever driven one? No. They're terrifying. I can imagine it. It's terrifying. It's like this. It's like you're driving a garbage truck. Yeah, I'm sure. It's yeah. a terrible idea. No, nothing happens. But the other thing is, it's like you, know, you build these cars. I guess. I guess the thing is, it, from our opinion, I know you agree with me. Get a piece of paper. Make a plan. Yeah. This is what it's going to cost to buy the right exhaust, the yeah. right intake. 
Let me look at the other take and see how many people use it, how many people like it, how many people don't think it sounds like a fart can. Yeah. Um, you know, what is, what's the best suspension? Go to car shows. You know, what I've always said is exhausts are one of the hardest things in the world to sample on the internet. That's true. Because you're true. only as good as the microphone recording that is. is. No the angle their, and, right. Yeah. So go to car shows. Go to car shows where that car is and say, listen, I have this car. Yeah. I'm thinking about starting it up. Can you can you just can you just start it up for me and let me hear it? Yeah. And then I do that the guys with courage you teach just because I want to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I'm honest about it. Well, but it's like, you know, when you look at a lot I've had guys come up to me, hey, you know, I have an NSX, I have a stock exhaust, I want to change it. You get the pride. What is, I've seen it, I've read about it, yeah. everyone loves it, it's hand built. What does it sound like? Well, I think what it's it, obnoxious, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think the, the thing that, I don't know if you mean to, but what you're sort of getting at is is uh, something that I said just privately to friends before in the car scene. Builds make builds. So, like, it, you know, if you have a car and you have, you know, sort of a loose idea what you want to do, you go to a car show, you're likely to find five or six cars that all are similar or exactly like what you want to do. And you can kind of see, like, you can see it before you build it, right? You know, like, you can look and go, oh, okay, so... You know these wheels will look like this, and with that space, it'll poke this much. And like, yeah, but you, you, they've done the research for you. But like, that's the key. Do the research. Yeah. Do the research. Go up to a guy at a car show that has the car you're thinking about buying, or has the mod right. you're thinking about putting on. Right. And ask him some questions. Trust me, he's going to want to talk about. Oh, for car. sure. He didn't build it. He probably not. likes this thing more than his kids. Yeah. <laughs> if he so has any. Yeah. He has any kids. I don't kids. <laughs> or, yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, neither. But I mean, the, the whole point is. Do the research. No, sure. But don't jump on the bandwagon. Like, oh, this guy put this on, so I'm going to buy it. I'm going to, yeah, build his car. Or it's like, just like that, but it's cheaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, yeah. I mean, it's something you get what you pay for in the tuning industry for the most part. That is true. I, actually, I, I've made you that You can buy a $250 spoiler, or you can buy a $1,500 spoiler. Trust me. And you'll you'll notice. Right. I've made that point before that, like, the automotive aftermarket is one of the last industries where you really almost always get what you pay for. Right. Almost all because it's. I think it's to do with the fact that like if somebody makes a product that they say works a certain way, and then you buy it and it doesn't, it will become known and shot sure. down so sure, sure, quickly. Sure, sure. Every, every much you know, more. It's like the saying: every happy customer tells a friend, every pissed off customer tells every the friend. world. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. And, it, and it's like, and you can. The thing is, your product. Give the company that you bought the product from the chance to fix it. Yeah. You know, don't just go on the internet and go, this is a piece of shit. Just call them up. Maybe they had a problem. Maybe there was a defect. Maybe you know, yours is bad. I've, I've seen companies literally go out of their way. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had, a, I'm not going to mention the company, but I had I had a company uh, that I dealt with a while back. They were sponsoring us some parts. They were giving us some stuff for builds. And um, the lug nuts they sold us, every time we put them on the car, they would strip out. And I have to take a wire brush and take the aluminum, their aluminum lug nuts, and before anyone goes crazy in comments, no, I wasn't impacting them on them. Yeah. We were putting them on the correct way. Yeah. But they were stripping out. And uh, they, when I called the company up, I told them what was going on. They were like, okay, really? And I said, can you send me one? I'm like, no problem. Nailed them one for the lug nuts. And, uh, and they were like, okay, we're going to send you a couple sets of lug nuts. Can you try them on your car to see if it's a problem? And they gave me like three different types of lug nuts, put them on the car. And none of the other lug nuts had a problem. And they were nice enough to get back to me like three months later. Oh, you know, they screwed up. And when they made these lug nuts, they made them out of the wrong alloy. Mm, too soft. They cast, and it, it was too soft. Yeah. And so now we're calling up all the people that bought these lug nuts. And, and saying, hey. And, giving, and they gave everyone new lug nuts. That's amazing. But, you know, and I've had stuff with parts that, you know, they got the sun and they deteriorated. Another big thing is, um, I don't know, you buy a spoiler, especially carbon fiber. This goes for any carbon fiber part, not just one. Yeah. yeah. You can buy, a, like, I have a VIS on my car, uh, so it's it's like, um, I'm sorry, uh, APR. So I have a carbon fiber wing on my car, and within a month in Florida heat, it will start to deteriorate the paint. Uh, the the gel code was, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, there isn't paint on it. No. And, you find out the hard way sometimes. It's then. just epoxy. It's just epoxy. Yeah. So the first thing you do when you buy your $1,500 wing is you have to get to buy a shop, have them sand the thing down, and clear it. Clear it. 
and then three or four and coats. And then yeah. make sure that's the one part in your car you're going to be waxing more than anything. Oh, absolutely. Else because the sun and the, the I'm in that water, habit. Yeah, I'm in so, that habit. So now my way, my way has been recleared and I've had, had a few things done to for, keep that problem from happening. Yep, yeah. Yep. But it happens on every carbon part. Yeah. It's not their fault. If you read it, it says it. Yeah. But you learn from you know you learn over time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You have a black car in Florida. It was 100 degrees today. You know what I mean? It was, it's going to be hot inside. Yeah, it's going to be hot. So things are going to cook. Interiors are going to cook. Yeah. But you know you don't have. And of course, all my cars are black. All of them. I would and my tow rig. I would like to think all of them, except for the bright orange Lexus. Yeah. But it, actually, that's a good looking. It is a good looking car. What's funny is I've never in my, you know, uh, I did I worked on some stuff uh, for a consulting firm that we were looking at women's purchase intent, and it said it was basically uh, color, cuteness, and cost for the three C's that women probably in that order. In that order, yeah. And and I was like, oh, really? And, it, and it, I thought that was interesting. And now I can't take my Lexus anywhere where women don't just go, that car's beautiful. Oh, what a problem to have. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's not a nightmare, <laughs> but it's like the car, the color just blows people away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm like you. I like black cars. I think I think a black car clean in the daylight is perfect. Gosh. It's perfect. Yeah. And, or, yeah, it's a nightmare to try and shoot at night. Shoot at night, yeah. you know, well, yeah. or shoot anything like that. But, yeah, so, I mean, I guess in closing, just if you're going to do it, do it right. Yeah. If, if, if you don't, uh, if you have questions... Um, ask us. Ask yeah. other people. Ask people you trust. If you buy, if you buy a type of car and that's what you've always wanted, find out who the top names in that industry are and talk to them. Talk to course of that. Benefit and yeah. benefit from their experience. Yeah. And, and you know, evolve. Let not make the same mistakes. And, do, and don't and don't fake it till you make it. Yeah. Like just don't. So, so we talk, this is not really a bad model. We got to show this off. So we're working on one of our friends. Um, this is not from Xena or uh, or Tron, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the uh, it was a Hyundai that one of our guys uh, had some brake problems with, as you can see. So this is actually the brake rotor from a Hyundai Santa Fe. Like the friction surface. Yeah, the 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 hat part of the disc was still on the car. It literally, it the the pads were shot, but it literally, if you can see, it rusted. And yeah, broke apart all the way through. through. So that's just a bad cast. You, you can't bad... even see where it was no. attached. It looks I, like it looks intentional. We need to, you know, what we need to do. I think, I think what we're going to do is that wall behind you is going to become the wall of shame. Wall of shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, so if anybody wants to donate any really hilariously broken, parts, oh, that'd be great. Uh, you know, send the story. Send the story. Yeah. Send the story, and uh, and we'll, we'll put it up on the wall of shame. Yeah, if it's, it's, a, if shame. it's especially fun or terrible. Yeah, it's on the wall. Yeah, for hopefully sure. it didn't hurt you in the process. Of, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, recently, I don't want any soft stories. No, there was a there was a there was a guy um, a while back. We were coming back from a car show, and we were flying. Doing the speed limit the entire time. Yeah, yeah, just, it yeah. felt like it, it was like it was like it was it was uh, photogenically enhanced. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. we were all we <laughs> Anyway, so we were going down the road, and this guy with a overly stanced car. I don't know what he hit in the road. I don't know if he hit anything on the road. You know, feather. <laughs> yeah. His entire and air. his entire lip came off his car, <laughs> and and he drove over it with all four. Oh. It exploded, and the pieces flew underneath my NSX. Not any, that got none of the pieces hit the car. They were all in the car. But what was so sad was another car was behind me, also stanced out. And big spoilers, they put a lot of downforce down, but once the air is behind the car, all the air goes straight up, and all those pieces went straight up in the air and just pelted this guy's oh, car. So like bad. pelted it. Like it was like it and he thought the parts came off my car. That's how bad it was. Oh wow. And we stopped and I'm like, nope, it was the guy in front of me and he could see where like it scuffed underneath the front of my lip. And, but yeah, so did, I, I, did any piece did you keep did you get into pieces? No, he he didn't even slow down. He just kept going. He was so aggravated. It's part of the life. <laughs> but I, and I've I've almost got hit in the windshield by reflectors that people have ripped off of their exhaust. Oh wow. Because some of the cars are so low that the can will actually rip the reflector right up the road. Oh, Look, yeah. if you guys oh, the, don't, little, the little long way. Yeah, if you guys don't have those in Florida, we have these reflectors all the road, so it rings and pours. You could your headlights can see the line. 
Actually, did you know on the backside they have a red? You're, you're red. Yeah, they're going the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when they're flying through the air, you really can't tell. <laughs> well, but how do you know that there's a red on the other side? Yeah, I just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's it. Do it right. Don't do it wrong. And we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys.